Welcome to Leading the Follower with your host, Rebecca Benston. Good morning. It is me, Rebecca Benston, once again, back with you for Leading the Follower. Um, They have switched up the way that we do our podcasts on the platform that I was using. So I'm trying to get used to a whole new way of recording. Not even sure if I'm going to be able to put the music and everything in that I usually use, but uh, I'm going to give it a shot, see what happens. And uh, you just never know if, if I'm going to be able to continue using this platform or not. I hope so, because I've really liked it. And it, it has been simple. However, if I can't figure out all the bells and whistles, then um, I'm just not sure how that's going to come through. Not that it's such an entertaining podcast anyway, but I would like to make it as consistent as possible if I can. Um, Just when I get comfortable, it seems like, you know, they pull the rug out from under me there, but it's okay. There's still tools and I am still able to learn. So I will continue uh, until I can't. And so... That's not really what I'm here to talk about, obviously. I am actually here to give my my thoughts for this Friday. Um, I've been thinking a lot about um, some different things that I saw over the week, and I wanted to share some things um, with you today. First of all, though, I want to remind you that you can go over to the Higher Ground Books and Media Shop, check out our new releases, um, including... Journey to the Mountaintop by Tara Kern and uh, Shine Like Stars by uh, Reverend Jerry C. Crossley and uh, One Day in May by Joanne Coleman and our newest release that we have available on Kindle and um, for paperback pre-order is I Love You Big by Jennifer Bolton which is an adorable children's book just in time for Valentine's Day. You can get this and read it with your kids. It is just a cute little book I think you'll enjoy. So, um, and we've got lots more over there. So please take some time this weekend and, and kind of scroll through our catalog and see if anything jumps out at you. We have fiction, inspirational, biography, whatever. Um, nonfiction, got a lot of uh, ministry resources, things that you can read with your small group and um, just things to make you think about uh, situations that other people might be in and and help you to uh, to get through a, a hard time yourself. It, it always helps to know that you're not the only one in the situation. So um, anyway, if you stop by, be sure to sign up for our newsletter to subscribe so that you can get regular updates and that will help us out quite a bit. Um, now into today's topic. This past week we had um, Groundhog Day, I believe. I think that was sometime toward the beginning of the week. It's been such a long few days, I have no idea. Um, and I was scrolling through my Facebook the other day and I saw that my aunt had um, posted something about her life felt like Groundhog Day. <clears throat> and I thought, yeah, sometimes it, it does feel like that. It, it certainly can get repetitive. And, um, and then I, I thought about it a little more and I thought, you know, she's had some, some real setbacks and some really sad things happen in her life. And, you know, I felt terrible because it's it's like okay it's bad enough to feel like you're having the same day over and over when nothing bad is happening but then to relive the same awful day over and over or the same awful series of days or months or whatever um and to feel like that's never going to end it's just a a terrible thing and as someone who has gone through various traumas in my own life You know, I just, I thought, you know, what a terrible, terrible way to feel. And I hope that, I hope that she can find something to bring her uh, peace and, and at least some hope and happiness 
you know, I, she's, she's a very good person and, uh, you know, one of my favorite people. And I just, I hate the thought that, that she feels that way, but I think that that's true of a lot of us. We go through periods of time where we feel like, you know, we're just living the same terrible, terrible day over and over and over and we can't get rid of it and we can't, um, get past it. <clears throat> and I thought about why it is that we may feel that way. Um, for me, I know that I used to be the type of person who um, hung on to um, commemorating things. Like, you know how some people celebrate good things. Well, I would not necessarily celebrate, but I would always remember that on such and such day, this terrible thing happened. And, uh, and I think our society is prone to having us do that for some reason, you know, it comes up in your, in your Facebook memories that you posted this last year, or two years ago, seven years ago, whatever. And they want you to just keep remembering that you had this, this post where you were talking about something painful that had happened to you or something good. It just depends on, you know, how you're, how your uh, social media goes. Like a lot of people don't post anything good or bad or whatever. So, um, <clears throat> but for those who share a lot on there, um, to have that just come up and slap you in the face every year is, is not really as helpful as one might think that feature is. <laughs> so, um, but I thought, you know, my life kind of started to get better. Um, of course, once I allowed some healing to take place, but it started to get better when I stopped commemorating those times in my life that were so painful to me. <clears throat> and I think I had trained myself somehow to hold on to those memories of deaths of people that hurt me or accidents or, you know, miscarriages. I, I as I've talked about, went through five miscarriages and I had, uh, always remembered when those happened and, you know, and just kind of dwelled on, on how I felt at that time and carried that grief with me from year to year as something that I had to, um, open back up every year and remember and, uh, take note of. And I thought, why am I doing that? Why, why am I doing that to myself? Why is that the thing that I'm hanging on to? because that wasn't helping me do anything but relive a traumatic um, point in my life that I went through. And it, it wasn't really helping me to heal. It's one thing to go back and revisit um, something that was hurtful or something that was damaging to you and to remember it for the sake of not falling into that trap again. But it's quite another to hold on to it so tightly and commemorate that every year, then it becomes part of your personality. It becomes who you are and you become that traumatic incident rather than moving past it and growing from it and helping yourself to get to the next level and take with you to that next level. Um, the lessons you were to learn from having gone through the trauma we're not supposed to pack up our trauma and drag it around with us. Um, and of course that's extremely hard not to do that if you haven't dealt with it. But if you've gone through a healing process and you, you've tried to do counseling or you've tried to do different things to help you move away from something that has, that has hurt you, um, you don't need to feel the need to drag that around with you and recall it every year and, and, you know, light a candle for it every year. You don't need to do that. For some people that's comforting, but I think we, we miss the point that we are training ourselves to relive trauma. And, um, I don't think that can be good for us. So as I thought about that this week, I thought, you know, there are a lot of people out there that, um, that claim to have the answer to help you heal from this and that. And they, you know, they want to 
they want to sell you a package of something and be your your guru to get you through um you know anything that might happen in your life i'm also um <clears throat> taking or well i just finished coursework for a uh, life coaching certification and you know the whole time i was taking the course i thought to myself you know you don't really have it all together to the point where you can be coaching somebody about their life. But then I thought, well, you know, I don't think anybody ever really has it all together. And I don't think I can ever have a solution for someone else's life. That's going to be um, a perfect fit for them. But what I do have is the benefit of experience. Um, I do have the capacity to communicate that experience. And I do have the ability and the willingness to share my experience with other people and help them to understand that there are different pathways out of grief and anxiety and depression. And although I'm not a counselor and I can't be um, a licensed counselor with, you know, just the, the coaching certifications and everything, I, um, I have life training and I have, I have been through many things that given that have given me the ability to, to talk to people and to listen to people and help them to, um, process some of what they've gone through and maybe reframe it to where they can develop a plan for their future that looks a little brighter than where they're coming from. <clears throat> so I'm hoping that um, all of these things that I'm putting together on the back end will translate into um, maybe some decent writing that I can do, and I'll be able to put together some guidebooks that might be helpful for people who are suffering from trauma or trying to recover from uh, setbacks. And um, maybe something they read or something they hear will help them to snap out of that, that Groundhog Day cycle that they get stuck in, and they won't feel like they're reliving the same day over and over. In fact, when they, uh, when they look in the mirror each day, they'll see someone who's ready to go out and do the next big thing in their life and, you know, and figure out a new, a new goal for their day or, or a new milestone that they can meet to help them get to their next level. That's always my intention when I'm, when I'm talking or writing is how can I help someone to get through something that they're, they may be stuck in. So, but that's, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about for this Friday. And since this is a new platform, I want to make sure that I keep it brief. Um, if for some reason I should have to re-record and start over, um, I want to make sure that I'm not doing hours and hours this first time around, but I will get it and I will be back with a longer recording probably next week. I hope you have a great weekend in spite of uh, some of the big things that are going on this weekend and that you <clears throat> enjoy your time off um, work if you have that over the weekend. Thanks for stopping in. Thanks for stopping by. Be sure to check out our website and blog. The blog is at www.leading-the-follower.com. Thanks and God bless.